Today's recipe is a Twelfth Night cake. It comes from Richard Briggs' 1788 cookbook, The English Art of Cookery. Thanks for joining us today on 18th Century Cooking. So before we get started with this Twelfth Night cake, let's talk just a little bit about the Twelfth Night itself. Yeah, you know, when I was a kid, uh, we sang the song Twelve, 12, days, right. of 12 days of Christmas. Had no idea what it was about. It right. was a fun song, but it's, it didn't make any sense to me. I wanted Twelve Days of Christmas. Sure, don't we all? Yeah, yeah. but but in, here in America, there's the 25th of December. Right, and then it's over. Right, right. So the, the 12 days of Christmas actually mm -hmm. refers to a, a period or a season mm -hmm. uh, that they, uh, uh, they've they celebrated for centuries. Right. And it's still, still celebrated. I mean, you'll find that in other cultures, even in Great Britain, I think they probably do a little bit more of that than certainly we do. We don't do any of that. Right. Um, it, was, it was the period of time between Christmas and Epiphany when the wise men were supposed right, to have shown right. up. So that's Twelfth Night, but there's some special Twelfth Night sort of happenings that go on, aren't there? Right. Or Twelfth Day. Uh, you know, in researching this, um, uh, I was finding extra culinary references mm -hmm. to Twelfth Night. Right. A letter from a mother to her son, we've sent you this Twelfth Cake, we assume we don't have to give you directions on how to use it. Um, uh, we, we see these pictures of these massive cakes in right. some 18, 18th century illustrations. Right. Yeah, enormous. One picture, two guys had to carry it. But interestingly, we don't find recipes that are right. specifically called Twelfth Cakes or Twelfth Night Cakes. Right. But I don't think that's strange. I mean, we don't have a special, you don't go into a cookbook today and say, this is a wedding cake or here's a birthday cake, this is a birthday cake recipe. No, we just make a cake recipe and we call it a birthday cake. The first recipe that I have found was in 1807, uh, John Mallard's third edition of his uh, The Art of Cookery, where he actually gives it a title, uh, a name, Twelfth Cake. But that doesn't mean that tw that was the first time no. You know, that was the invention of the twelfth cake. Right. It goes way, way, way back. You can see it uh, in the illustrations and read it in the text. Right. So let's get started. The very first thing we want to work on are the, the is getting the pan ready, or in this case, our cake form. Right. We're using hoops. Um, uh, you find references to these in the cookbooks. They're called garths. Uh, we have a tin hoop. Uh, right. Our, our uh, coppersmith actually makes these, Peter Goebel. It's a reproduction, 18th mm -hmm. century reproduction. Uh, this, though, our wooden hoop, we've kind of cheated, Ooh, haven't yeah. we? Right. This hoop actually comes from our uh, our sieves, that our brand new sieves that we're carrying. You can disassemble this sieve. You may not be able to reassemble it again. Nope. Uh, but it, it makes a perfect, it's exactly the same size as our tin one. And they talk about using wood ones instead of tin ones that they actually might work better. They don't, they won't burn the cake. Right. Because right. they don't transmit that heat in quite the same way. They sort of insulate it. The, these cakes are very dense and they're very heavy. In fact, the recipe that we're using, we're cutting it into fourths and it's gonna produce a five pound cake. So just imagine a 20 pound cake, yeah. a much, it would take a much larger hoop than this. Yeah. And, and the wood actually shields the outside of the cake to keep it from burning. Those larger cakes, they would often put even like a, a paste or a, pa a pastry paste in the bottom to, uh, and let it absorb the, the majority of the heat so that the cake itself isn't burned. I, I've got two circles of parchment paper. And uh, you would really want to start off uh, by covering uh, the, it's going to be the bottom of your garth or hoop. Um, and you would lay this on top and then just go around and crinkle it down to get it to fit. And uh, once you have it down, kind of formed around it, uh, we need to tie it on. If you're having trouble getting this string good and tight on there, you can add a little wedge. That'll get it nice and tight without you having to fuss with the knot. All right, so now that we have the paper on the bottom, we're gonna butter this up. Uh, it's important that you butter it up. It just, the, the cake won't yeah. stick to it. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go on ahead and uh, just slime this all around, try and fill in, especially that crack along the edge. We need to line the side of this as well. So I've got a long strip here um, that's cut 
long enough to go all the way around. And it helps, you know, to butter the, the lay it out flat on the table, butter the paper first and then put it in uh, so that the butter is on the inside, not on the outside. And that kind of helps the paper to stick together there at the where it overlaps and that way it won't keep collapsing. This is ready to go and now we can start on the main preparation. Right, right. The recipes can be very specific. They actually call for making sure to have all your ingredients ahead of time so that you've got them all set out before you start mixing it. So this recipe calls for a full pound of butter as well as uh, uh, about a half pound of sugar. We have eight eggs and we've separated the yolks from the whites. After that, we have three cups or about a pound of flour, along with three quarters of a teaspoon of ground mace and ground nutmeg. Then we have a half a cup or a gill of brandy, a quarter cup each of candied orange, lemon, and citron rind, one cup of slivered almonds, and a pound of Zante currants. But for Twelfth Night, there's one more ingredient, right? Uh, yeah, we can't forget the coin or the bean. If you're going to use a coin, make sure it's not copper. Silver would be best. Let's start off with the very easiest mixing here because it's gonna get much tougher later on. I'm gonna mix the currants, and these are Zante currants. They're basically miniature raisins. Uh, we're gonna mix the currants along with all these sweet meats that we've picked out. Uh, also, in goes the uh, the slivered almonds or the uh, sliced almonds here. Oh, well, while John's doing that, I got the easier of the two jobs. I'm gonna take the flour, three cups, and the uh, nutmeg and the mace, and we're gonna mix that up. And we're gonna when we get both of these mixed up separately, we're gonna set them aside, and then the fun begins. You need to whip the whites and, and the, the yolks. yolks and separately. 30 minutes if you're doing it by minute. hand. Okay. I'll catch up with you later. I'm gonna take this pound of butter. Now this butter is semi-soft, all right? But I need to cream it. Now, in a modern kitchen, you would cream butter by sticking it in a um, mixer, but they didn't have mixers in the 18th century. So you had to do it by hand. And the warmth of your hand will soften the butter. And as you squeeze it and work it, you're gonna start working air into it. Until finally, it's going to look like a yellow whipped cream. When this butter's softened up, we can go on ahead and add our half a pound of sugar. And I'll continue beating this up until this is uh, really nice and smooth and fluffy. And I'm gonna keep working on these eggs until we've got them to a nice uh, stiff peak stage. Okay, John, now that we've faded through black, literally and figuratively, uh, we have to take these three components and uh, fold them into whichever bowl is the biggest. I think this one's the biggest. We offer these uh, birchwood wooden whisks on our website. They're handmade and uh, professional chefs uh, prefer uh, whisks like this even today uh, for certain purposes. Uh, one of the interesting things about this piece is that it is an egg leavened uh, cake. And egg leavening is one of the leavening types that you see in uh, 18th century cooking. You don't see what we would use in a cake today, which is, uh, of course, chemical leavening. So this is the kind of cake that they would have made. And now we're gonna fold in this, um, this flour a little bit at a time. And we really have to keep moving. We're losing the air bubbles even as we speak. There we go. We have this beautiful, light, and airy batter. It's amazing. It has such a wonderful texture to it. And now in go the sweet meats, or in this case, this we're gonna fold this into the sweet meats. Right, right. You're gonna need a big bowl for this. Okay, that is such a real, it, it's a light, airy batter. And we need to be careful about stirring that too hard or we'll beat that air out right. of there. Um, our hoop is ready, that's ready. We need to uh, marry the two, so, so to speak. Now, the recipe says to put this immediately in the oven. We're gonna put this in at 350 degrees for about two hours. Isn't that amazing? 
Yeah, it, it looks wonderful. It's even risen over the top. So yeah. you didn't sh shape this, it came up over the top. And if you see those period illustrations, you'll see that very thing happening, that the cake is sort of mounded up in the center. Right. There we go. Oh, look at oh, that. Look at that. Paper, just paper came right came, off. Came right off. Oh my goodness. It looks perfect. <laughs> I, I say let's let's slice into this and see what see what it's really like. All right, let's do it. Well, it looks perfect on the inside. It's wow. got a great coloration. Mm. Oh wow. wow. It tastes so lemon. Excellent. Yeah. All the everything's coming through wonderfully. And the almonds. Oh, yeah. All that fruit in there. Wow. This recipe is so wonderful. It's full of flavors. Mm. Uh, it's it's great, and I hope you get a chance to try it. It makes a wonderful holiday uh, cake, and I hope everyone out there has a wonderful, happy Twelfth Night. And a Merry Christmas. If you're new to our channel, I want to welcome you. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking the button right up here. Uh, also, check out our related videos. Thanks so much for watching.